What's going on, everybody? Fitz Bentley Constrictors here, and as you see, I'm hanging out with these balls and exotics. Uh, I'm really stoked about this, uh, having this guy on. Before we start, though, I do want to thank everybody for showing up. I do appreciate you all very much. Um, I think you all feel the same way in this community. That's why I like this community. Now, I know that there's a few people that are branch off into other communities as well. I, I would love to hear what you think uh, about this community compared to others. I think we do a real good job of policing each other, and I think we do a good job of uh, trying to keep it the facts instead of opinions and nobody has hard feelings. So I appreciate all for that real quick. I want to thank LK, uh, Leon from LKB pythons, iron dog reptiles, motor danger zone, Annette Cruz, low life exotics, my animal house and no BS exotics for the super chats last week. And I wish you all would thank them as well. And if you haven't subscribed to it, please do so. Um, they are the ones that are helping out for the game show that is on the 18th. Won't be real big, but it will be pretty fun um, as always um anyway stay tuned for other stuff after the live uh, i'm going to give out some shout outs to some people and some links to stuff that they're doing as far as giveaways and as well as raffles so be watching for that all right enough talking with my big mouth Dees. thank you so much for joining um i think everybody in here probably knows you already but if you could just do this for me because i really don't know a lot of stuff about you that i really do want to know um yeah, and it's you can just tell us your name, you know, don't have to go in your last name. Uh, your social security card would be really awesome. Your <laughs> um, no, but if you just tell us where you're based out of, where you're, you know, um, what you're doing and what you uh, have going on right there. Where are you at? Like, where so, is this store? Is this your bedroom? Is this a garage? Please take over. All right. So uh, if you guys don't know, my name is Dylan, Dylan Smith. Um, if you guys want to shoot me a you know friend request or follow on uh, Instagram or anything. It's all under D's Balls and Exotics, um, much easier than my name. As far as where I'm located, I'm, in Tacoma, I'm based out of Tacoma, Washington. This is my, I call it my happy place or reptile room, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's just a converted garage. So it, it's a large two car garage, but it's just a converted garage. We uh, carpeted and, you know, insulated the door here and everything and, um, that's kind of where I work out of. Uh, as far as what we do, I mainly focus on bringing ball pythons and Burmese pythons. I am raising up some colubrid projects, uh, but if you notice behind me, I do have some larger cages and stuff for monitors that we just keep because I just love reptiles. Uh, I have a lot of stuff that will never breed. Um, I just keep them because I love them. I mean, I've got a I don't know if you guys can see that four foot at the bottom there, but that is my 22 year old corn snake that'll never go anywhere. And I never plan on breeding. I just love the animal. Um, we breed all of our own feeders. So we're working on doing that publicly as well. Uh, we're right around 50 colonies right now, hoping to expand to around 200 by the end of the year. Uh, we also breed all of our own feeder insects. Uh, my buddy who comes over and helps us clean a couple times a week, usually he's doing all of our quail. Um, and then we've also started breeding all of our own rabbits as well. Oh, well, so. it eliminates one of my questions because I was going to say, so what else do you do? Uh, I know what I'm doing here. What I don't know how you have any time to do anything else. <laughs> do you do anything else? <laughs> it's hard. Um, I try. When I do, I like to fish and hike. Oh, Those you know, things. Oh, and shooting. You know, I like guns. Oh, awesome. Very good. <laughs> I, I, love, I love the SSC. I actually just picked up hiking. Um, yeah couple years back and i'm really lucky to have a place called pitcher rocks right up here you should all check it out internet sometime. i'm gonna have to look into that yeah it's an amazing place in the up no place like it um and it's, it's some really cool little hiking trails but i yeah. have been doing the at man i've always had a dream of doing the appalachian trail dude the whole yep thing. i don't think i ever will but i always thought about it so it's really cool to right. hear that these other things that you are uh you are doing that. i don't think i didn't think i knew that i don't know if you ever talked about yeah. that I, I don't really talk about it much, to be honest. I feel like people just come for the snakes. They don't want to hear about anything else. So, Well, you, you know, know. I, find, I find learning a little bit about a person and about the past and where they kind of came from and different things that they were into, it, it tells a story for me. You know, yeah. that's, that's why I ask these kind of questions that a lot of people might think they're off the wall. But if you if you look back at it in the video, you're going to go, OK, this makes sense. He was, she's trying to find out where this started. Um, yeah. And it's funny you say fishing because a lot of people I know, their reptile love came from fishing. A lot of yeah. people seeing snakes on their way to fishing and hanging up by the water. Yeah. Uh, so it seems to be a little gateway. Um, what did get you started? Um, honestly, I mean, really, I just loved them. I don't know. It was, it was kind of like a, I found a bunch of garters growing up and stuff, you know, and turtles and gophers and just random, you know, wild snakes we have here in Washington. 
And I just kind of, I don't know what drew me to them, but something just drew me to them. You know, uh, I watched a lot of Animal Planet as a kid, nature documentaries. I was that nerdy kid, you know. So um, I can't, I honestly, I hate it, but I don't really have the best answer for that because I was just already attracted to them. I just, as well, soon as I saw them and they were a thing, I was like, what? Snakes are fucking awesome. Turtles? Turtles are the shit. You I know, kind of so I, the same way. So I kind of relate to that. I didn't have a family yeah. member that was into it. I didn't, you know, I didn't know a guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't have a friend that had something. I just had an interest. You know, I think yeah. I scout camp originally and I was just like, I just got to have start having these. Why not? You know what I mean? I'll get yeah. it. You know? uh, so I can relate to that. It's kind of, and a lot of people they're like, you know, a friend. Um, I think really what started it for me was, and I think this is for a lot of people too, is that a guy came to my school when I was younger with yeah. uh, really big Burmies. So it's funny. Every time I think of you, I think of Burmese. Like, yep. that's a, a compliment to you because. Um, Thank you. And it should be. It really should be. And and I, I say that because uh, the passion that you have for them. I love how you, you stick up for them as, you know, that's what you love. You know what I mean? Yep. But it's not like I'm going to hold you beneath me because you love these more. Or are you like this more than you like my berms? And, yep. You know, I was talking to Chris Iron Dog earlier today. And uh, we were talking about something like that, that, you know, why can't you just love the reptiles yeah I mean, especially now more than ever with all the crap going on so yeah everybody always tries to pin me in that retic versus berms thing and i'm like man i love them i have a retic a mainland retic i love them i just don't want to breed them it's not what i'm like i'm not super passionate about it enough people are passionate about it i'll leave it to them right you know? right yeah and uh, i appreciate it. And, you know and that, again i hate to keep reflecting on the community but a lot of the community feels this way too and i think that's what separates us now you have been part of I would say you've probably been around a lot of different people and, and some pretty decent people too. Um, where, where do you, where did you see yourself when you um, started to say, okay, I kind of want to make this a little bit of a business, maybe not so much a business to make a million bucks, but maybe um, like myself, you were like, okay, this stuff isn't cheap to take care of. So I got to so, do something about it. So surprisingly enough, uh, and a lot of people don't actually know this, but I didn't start breeding ball pythons. Uh, I've kept reptiles since I was a little kid. As soon as I turned 18 and, you know, was out, had my own place and everything, um, I started collecting snakes uh, and I had a lot of corn snakes. So I actually, my first breeding was corn snakes. I was never successful because, you know, I was making horrible life choices at that time. And, um, well, you know, 18 to 21, you're not, most people at least aren't making the best choices, but let's just say I made the worst choices. And, um, that kind of got me into it. But at the time I was, you know, with somebody in life that was not supportive at all. They didn't want me to, you know, get into it. So I kind of just, you know, it was null and void. I, you know, got out of it. I kept Bella and, um, and everything else went away. And then, um, it wasn't until me and my, me and Amanda got together, uh, you know, about four years ago, a little over four years ago or so now that, uh, you know, I expressed my passion for the reptiles and that I really wanted more and to really get into it. And then that's when I, I that's when I first started learning about all the crazy morphs. I knew about, you know, the albinos and the the pides and the stuff you see commonly, you know, posted and shared. But I didn't know about, you know, all the different little enhancer genes and this and that. I mean, we could go on for days about that, but I didn't know about well, any you of that. Could. <laughs> so, <laughs> I for days, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all can for sure so it was really then that it just started and you know i'm one of those people like if i get into something i don't half-ass stuff i try to do the absolute best i can so you know and i guess in a short amount of time we've built all of this and um you know i just see it going up from here i don't, I don't see any slowdown to it well, let's take a one quick second here, but I do want to talk about your setup here. And I always want to say uh, thank you for stopping in Hissy Fit Reptiles. Um, I have an announcement for him later on in the live, um, but it's good to see you in here, man. I'm glad you made a few minutes of time. And everybody, I just want you to know, I do go back when I do interviews. I really don't read the chat. I try to really talk with the person. Um, and I'm truly trying to milk information from him tonight. I know that's a little bit selfish, but listen, you all can benefit from that um, because I do have a large lizard coming and I love the way this guy does his stuff. I have a lot of respect for the guy and I haven't known him real long. We have never had any conversation outside of, I think prior to this video starting was probably our longest direct conversation we ever had. Would you say? Yeah. You know, I mean, we don't pretty talk much, really, you know what I mean? Back but and I, forth in live chats. That's about right. it. Yeah. But I'm just totally um, impressed with 
what you've done in this short amount of time because I go back and I look and I'm like, hmm, this has been a short amount of time. Like this person's passion's coming through. And the nice thing is, is that your passion started with infrastructure. Yeah. I can't tell you how important that is to see for myself and for other people to see as well. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about your infrastructure and what you have going on here, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, I mean, I'm glad you say that because a lot of people, you know, um, they don't really plan that way. They go the cheapest route possible. And I won't say I didn't at first. I had Melody yeah, and Rax. Yeah, and everybody made, understand. There's no know. shame in this. Like yeah. this has been made by a gazillion people. There's people but I thought it was people. really important before I invested a shitload into the snakes to get good equipment. Because, it, I mean, if you think about it, every snake you buy, at least as a breeder, right? It's different if it's a pet. You know, I understand that. But as a breeder, you're investing in these animals. You're investing in those genetics. I don't want to trust my... You know, let, let's just say you, you have a 10 snake rack, right? 10 tall. Okay. Let's say each snake in that, you know, rack averages a thousand dollars. Well, now you have $10,000 just in snakes in that rack. Do you want to trust that to home wiring and plywood or whatever? I don't, that's not worth the risk. I'd rather pay the other extra thousand dollars to have, now, you know, so you've never had an issue. You've never had that issue yourself, nope. but you, you've seen other people make these. Yeah, mistakes. And I don't want that. It's so, lovely when you can make when you can, you know, learn from other people's mistakes. Yep. Don't, don't pass that stuff off. I'm exactly. Sorry. You know, and I will say, you know, and melamine also, everybody likes this stuff. But uh, if you really research into it, when heated up, you know, any point really further than our snakes need, if it gets a little too hot, the stuff releases chemicals that aren't good for your animals. And on top of that, you know, you get that stuff the littlest bit too wet. It swells and it's such a pain to get those tubs out. I mean, you're sitting there with your foot on the rack, like, oh, come on, you know, come out. And it's just not worth it. I mean, we got to be efficient, too. Good. You have to seal them real good. Every crack, every seam, real yeah, good. Yeah, everything. And even then, it can be. And if, you know, and I will say, listen, people, have, it's just like pine bedding. We've kept snakes in melamine racks. For, oh, yeah, for sure. I can remember. And, you know, you know, over a period of time, you you just might not notice what's yeah. going on and what's happening. And, and, you know, I don't judge anybody with melamine rack. I have right now, in all honesty, yeah. Anything that comes in here for sixty days is going to be in a melamine rack. Oh, for sure, yeah. Or no, I don't. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. I think for me, it was but, just important to base the main, you know, but, collection yeah. on no, proper caging and everything. So I'm just making sure people understand that if you're sitting there looking at your rack right now and it's made out of melamine, just understand that everybody in this place has probably had their snake in a melamine rack at one point or another. So oh, yeah, oh um, yeah. You move up when you can move up, and that's your business and your pace. So yeah, no, I just want to put that out. There no, you're I'm, good. Because hey, I'll put it out there too. When I first started keeping snakes, all I knew was tanks and heat lights. I didn't know anything about thermostats or anything like that, you know. And I, oh, and I also kept a lot of turtles, um, yep. Russian tortoises. I I had a thing for them. I don't know. Yeah. So now, what was the first thing that you know? The racks and stuff that you have back here now, are they, yeah. did you make them? Did, had, did you have them made? Is this a play, you know, cause so, you know, like, some differences in them. They're not all done the same way. Yeah. So it's a little bit of, a little bit of A, a little bit of B. Um, obviously the rack back there is ARS. You can't see, but there is a rack, another rack, uh, FB 70 between mm -hmm. the monitor cage here and the ARS. Um, yeah. and then, yeah. I have V18 hatchling racks on the other side there. They're tucked back in on the other side of the ARS. Um, those and oh, this yes. monitor cage was made by a local company. Um, I did modify the 8x4x4 by four by four quite a Thanks. lot from how it came. These guys are animal plastics on top as well as the stack of... Sorry, rotate you guys here. As well as the stack of four foots here are animal plastics. I built the all these eight foots myself. Um, for me, it was a lot more cost effective, and you know, having wait, access wait, to wait, wait. you built those ones right there. On my yeah, all these eight foots. So the Man. four foots are T8s, but I built the eight foots. And, uh, and I'll be straight up. I kind of mimicked AP's design, but I had some changes in mind that I wanted to see. So. And for me, I saved a bunch of money doing it. You know, and it, made out of PVC. Yeah, those are all PVC. And you're you where you live, you're you're able to get PVC pretty pretty easily. I take it. Eh, so it's not that easy. I just happened to know a local builder, and I said, you know, hey, I've known you quite a while. Can I buy some stock? Because you know, 
I need these and I need these done now. So that kind of thing, you know? Um, but he was cool, sold me the PVC and everything, uh, and then got the glass cut at a local place. So the changes on my eight foot cages that I made versus animal plastics is I use a thicker glass, the center and the outside supports. So it basically has the same face plate as these four foots, but I right. have a six inch center beam on my eight foots. And then I have, I don't remember the, I want to say it's four and a half on each side, but I wanted wider support there on the face plate Did as you, well as, what was that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's an eight foot. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> well, not like even versus the APs at that size. It's an extra two inches on every, um, every support versus the APs. Plus and then of it, you know, you, yeah, so. Yeah, uh, everything's routered in, and then I also doubled the ventilation. So for me, I think big snakes really need a lot of airflow. Um, I'm still, I want to work on, I've been working on it. I haven't like really ever talked about this, but I've been working on a fan system to put on the backside of the cages. And in my idea is I want it blowing in the middle of the back of the cage, and that way it's going to go to the front and it's going to separate. So it's going to you know, it's going to mess with your hot and cool a little bit, but not really because it's going to go both ways and then out. Uh, right. But I think airflow is key. You know, um, that's just my personal experience. I see people run into a lot of issues. Um, and then I built the incubator. That's, you know, just a home built one. Um, you keep a really nice tight ship, man. I, I, like I said, a lot of us, you know, we've talked, people have talked, you know, really impressed. You keep a nice, tight, clean place. Everything looks really nice and crisp. And, you know, this is what you want to see when you want to buy some, you know what I mean? When, when I want to buy some, yeah. you don't have to be in your own store somewhere. You don't have to be breeding 4,000 snakes a year. You know, you don't have to be doing any of that. When I look for stuff, I just look for the passion and yep. you got, you're, you're always willing to keep learning and keep going and moving. Um, I, I want to ask you why green? What's with the green? Chip? I like black and green. I don't know. It's been a thing. Um, I don't know. I was, so, you know, I was one of those kids. I went through every phase, right? Seriously, from like straight preppy boy to emo to goth to just everything in between, um, you know, and Are I kind of, what was that? You skater boy? Actually, yeah, that's how my back got messed up. Yeah, that's how so, my palms don't work anymore and everything else. <laughs> you know, you know, um, but I don't know. I kind of just like I grew into a you know, I guess who I am today, but I work in the staging industry and uh, black is kind of standard and black and green for me just go together. So, so you kind of have a little bit of an artistic kind of way about you anyway. Yeah. You say, you yeah. Now, Actually, I used to paint. Um, I don't really do much anymore, but I used to do custom canvases for people. I, I can throw a, lot, a, of, a lot of graffiti. I can picture you being like a tattooist. Like if I didn't know you, I was just like, Hey, guess this job. I'm like, Tattooist, you know, that's what they're out there, you know what I mean? Cause, and not because you got tattoos or anything either, just because, you know, you, it's you know, it's funny. I actually did every single tattoo on my body except one. Well, that room you're in looks like you'd see a clean tattoo artist place. Yep. Of, you know what I mean? It really is set up kind of like that. That's what it reminds me of when I look at it anyway. Yeah, I'm kind of OCD. I won't lie. Like, it, it bugs me if the room's not clean. I got a vacuum. Like, I got to clean it up. I've been yeah. looking at those little, uh, the Roomba things. The different you know robot vacuums i'm like can i just get one of these because then i don't have to vacuum twice a day they work pretty good do they the animals are okay with them they work pretty good well no no other animals are allowed in here but the yeah. reptiles so yeah yeah if you if you don't well see i'm i'm going to be getting and we're going to kind of split i might as well segue into it now um i'm going to be getting a large lizard and yep. uh i seen a video of yours because you know i was looking at how to set up different things and you know yeah uh, if I'm getting something that I'm not strictly familiar with, I really just kind of drown myself in information and yep. then I look for some more, you know what I mean? Um, and I come across your video setting up for your Savannah, right? Yeah. Uh, um, now the substrate, I, I don't really like exact, uh, people have a large guess of what it is, but they might yes. um, But I'm really interested in how you did your substrate. Okay. Now, I don't know if you're doing it the same way you did in that video, maybe you've changed it, but I would definitely love to hear this. If anybody out there is uh, thinking about getting some lizards that might burrow a little bit or anything like that, um, definitely interesting. Yeah. So how I keep them now, I don't know if we'll be able to actually see his substrate. I try to keep it just below that line there, but I'll angle over there. 
Um, so, and then we also did do that full background in his basking rock and everything. But the way I keep their substrate is like you said, they're, you know, they're a burrowing species. Um, and you got to be able to hold that burrow and you don't want it to collapse on them. Cause you know, when you're, when that lizard digs a foot and a half down, two feet down and that collapses, that's a shitload of weight. Some of them can't take that. Um, so what I use is a mixture of peat moss, play sand, organic topsoil, and um, I'm leaving something out there. Peat moss, topsoil, sphagnum moss, organic topsoil. Four. Those four uh, substances. Now, you you got to really... Uh, did you do an even mix? Are you a little heavy on one side? No. So real light on the sand. Uh, a lot of guys I see, they use a really sandy mixture, and I just find it doesn't grow plants well. And I try to keep plants in there just to help with the oxygen and just, you know, everything going on in their little ecosystem. Um, you know, it's hard to do bioactive with large monitors, but besides the occasional like large poop in the water changes, I don't have to clean his cage at all. That's, yeah, like that's that. it. He's got, he's got drier species of isopods in there. I dumped a ass load or, you know, a lot of springtails in there. Um, and, you know, some of them obviously passed away and didn't make it. But between that, the, you know, the plants and everything in that substrate mix, I've just it's been pretty much its own ecosystem. Besides the large dumps, that's about all I got to remove. Um, and that mixture really holds up. So what I do is light play sand. So for a cage that size, right, I can tell you the mixture for that cage. Um, I haven't really scaled it down just because, you know, I don't have any other smaller animals to keep on that substrate. Oh, well, I'm, uh, I myself. Again, sorry to be selfish, everybody, but that works for me, that size right there. So Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I got you. You ready? Yeah. What, oh, a, trust me, I've been ready for weeks. A, so I've talked to you about <laughs> it a little bit. And, a bag uh, to a bag and a half of play sand. You can play with that a little bit, uh, but I know I didn't go the full two bags. Uh, it was about a bag and a half of play sand. There's three bales, or uh, no, four bales, excuse me, of the peat moss, two big bales of sphagnum, and then I want to say it was six bags of the organic topsoil. Um, so I kind of played around with that, but I know your ratios are right in that ballpark right there. Right, right. But, and I can, and I can gauge it too, of course, for what my yeah. situation is as well. Right, and so, and I and I don't know him too that well, so you know, uh, he'll kind of tell me what he likes to do more than others. So yeah, exactly. You want a good base and idea, and I think that's awesome. And like I said, I've seen your setup before in uh, one of your videos, and I was just like, I didn't really have to watch too many more videos on that, which yep. was really nice because normally I'm like on everything, you know, I'm looking at everything. But yeah, uh, again, really comfortable when I'm listening to you. I like how you're you're not telling everybody, hey, this is what you got to do. This is what I do. Yep. This you know, is what I do. It works for me. There's too many people out there telling you what you have to do, um, and not enough people out there telling you what they're doing. Yeah, uh, Eric DeMeyer was talking to Doug Necker the other day, that Sissy Fit Reptiles, um, about how we just love how he does his videos. He just comes on and does some videos. He doesn't talk about anybody here, nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> Never involved in no crap. Uh, he I just love it. <laughs> it's so sweet. Um, now, your first, uh, when you were thinking about breeding you um, and, and getting into the Burmese, was yeah. there somebody that you would say that, that you would kind of owe your, your Burmese path to? I mean, is there somebody that you would say, and I'm not saying everybody has to run over and go follow what they're doing and everything, but is there, who's the, who's the people you respect that the big snake people out there that you could say, so, hey, listen, you know, you want to know something, you want to feel a little bit more secure. These are the people that, that I felt good about over the last couple of years. Yeah. So actually, I, those are two separate answers for me. When I first got into berms, I honestly didn't have anybody. Um, and the few people that I did reach out to were not helpful to say the least um, somewhat rude, half of them, you know, they didn't want to help you, but, you know, after getting further into it, you know, getting them, owning them for a few years, uh, the people that I found were really, really helpful and really inspiring to me. Uh, one was Jackie from cold hearted exotics. Um, she's a good friend now and just produces some amazing animals, has some really cool stuff. Uh, but I really love what she was doing with the Enigma line stuff. And she was really helpful when I had questions, you know, um, I, I didn't feel like I was, you know, bugging them or like, you know, uh, ruining their day for asking a question. Right. Kind of thing. And you get that from people. Somebody that you respect and then they, they kind of shut you down. And then yeah. 
wow, and then, man, I really liked you. And it just feels yep, bad. You know? Exactly. And I'll be honest, it took me a while to actually reach out and ask questions because of how I had been treated previously. You know, and, I was like, it's always been a scary thing to do. Yeah, you know, I was like, I'll just watch from afar, I guess, which is why I strive not to be that way because, you know, I want to help. I, if I have information, I want to spread it out there. I don't know everything, but if it's something that could help you, then, you know, sure. Uh, with that said, Aaron from Black Diamond Herps um, has been another one. Travis from TK Exotics. He is one of the realest motherfuckers yeah. I know. I just, um, you know, great guy. Um, really, those were the main, the main three for me. Um, you know, there's some old school guys that were, I really loved the stuff they were doing and what I was seeing, um, but I didn't really get a chance to personally learn from, you know. Now, look, let me ask you, um, and, and I don't want your name drop, you know, drop any names, but, you know, you, you've had some bad experiences uh, with people. And, of course, we, we're not here to bash anybody. So, yeah, uh, if anybody's looking for name drops, we're not going to do that. I'd ask you not to do that anyway. Uh, just, yep. just as good business. But, you know, um, have, do you have any uh, so story you might be able to tell us about how, you know, maybe somebody kind of just didn't do you right? or Yeah. Um, so... Like I said, I'm not going to name drop. Um, if you know, you know, please don't name drop in the comments. Great. It's I not think worth it. Pretty respectful how um, we do here. This isn't to hurt anybody's feelings or nothing. This is for you all to learn like, hey, you know, sometimes what you're seeing is not what you're getting and you should, you know. Yeah. It's but, not about bashing nobody. Sorry. So <laughs> I saw this uh, hypo Burmese that was on a raffle. And this was one, one of the most beautiful hypos I'd ever seen. I mean, this thing was stunning. I had been already watching this snake on the person's page before they decided to put it up for raffle. Um, and, you know, at the time, like money was tight. Bills had just been due. But both myself and the girlfriend emptied our bank accounts into that raffle. Yeah. To, sometimes, sometimes I was you... like, I, I need this snake. I need as many chances I can get to win this snake. I won the snake. Uh, well, when I received the snake, the heat pack had fallen on her. The pack packaging was, I mean, shit at best, just to be straight up with you. It was bad. And me being even new to this, you know, at that time, like I knew it was bad. And, um, you know, I, for me, when I get new animals, I don't like play with them a lot right away. Oh, let me rewind for a second. She had a kink in her tail that I was never informed about. So she had a short nub tail that, you know, kind of looked like the lightning bolt from Harry Potter's forehead. Wow. Um, and it wasn't like horrible. Sure. It was, you know, so very compact, but it was still like, like that's something you tell somebody about. You you're going to notice it when they get the snake. Yeah. And raffle or not, you should be telling people this information, you know. Um, but then fast forward to what I was saying. When I get new snakes, I don't sit there and, you know, play with them a lot. I, You know, at first, yeah, I made those mistakes, but I learned it's really better to observe the animal check for mites and health issues, you know, real quick, and then put them in their tub. Well, I had, you know, at the time I kind of looked up to this person, so I didn't really think to check for, you know, any health issues or anything like that. I did a quick look over for mites, which on a hypo that bright was a very easy check, right? right. I didn't see any mites, but I put the animal in the tub and, you know, I kind of, you know, I obviously check it to care for it. But other than that, I forget about it for a couple of weeks, you know, and I just feed and clean and that's it, you know, and I really try and minimize any handling or playtime. It's literally put it into a clean tub, swap the tubs out, sanitize, you know. And so a couple of weeks go by and I notice the snake has a respiratory infection. Um, it was about 10 days or so. And for me, you know, respiratory infections are fairly common in Burmese, not extremely common but they can happen you know um and i'm kind of prepared i was thankful to learn from some old school guys really how to treat that stuff at home uh, i don't recommend it for you guys if you don't have experience with it but i was taught firsthand and i know how to treat them um so i did you know two rounds of that treatment uh each round being a week-long treatment no help so i then went you know i went to my vet that's my next call like if i can't treat it with my remedy i'm going to go straight to my vet and uh, I have a great vet. We did a few rounds of different antibiotics. And um, to, I guess just to make a long story short, after a few thousand dollars and, you know, about, don't think it was quite a year, but about a year later, uh, I had to put her down due to right-sided heart failure due to a mycoplasma uh, infection that caused that secondary right-sided heart failure. Um, so really be careful who you guys are buying from. Seriously, be careful. Like, 
this is something, you know, and mycoplasma is one of those things that a lot of you never hear people talk about it. And it's just as deadly, if not more deadly than NIDO. So what people don't, you know, and even my vet told me this straight up. He's like, we only understand X amount of mycoplasma. There's thousands of other strains of this that we have no idea about that could be species specific, region specific, et cetera. Um, but, you know, it kind of ruined the taste for me with that person. Like you couldn't disclose this to me. And I, you know, I had then talked to some other people that I respect in the community. And uh, turns out I'm not the only person with a snake with those exact same symptoms from that exact same person. So it's definitely it's, uh, something that's in this guy's collection. Yeah. And then I had heard, um, you know, on the DL from somebody that I highly respect that uh, he had actually sold half of his collection because he couldn't get rid of the RI issues. And no wonder, because it wasn't a fucking RI, it was mycoplasma. And you can't treat that. There's no treatment. I tried everything from cephalexidine to Batril. Um, the Batril left horrible scars because we had to, we had to increase the dose. There was, you know, we tried with the real diluted and, it just, it wasn't doing anything. And I did everything in my power to save this snake. Like I said, it was the most beautiful hypo I'd ever seen. Um, we were thousands in vet bills and, and just you know, to put her down. And that's it too, you know, really knowing. Sometimes you see something you really, really want and, and you jump on it and, and it ends up being the biggest mistake. Yep. Um, it happens so often. You know, I, and I don't enter raffles normally myself. But yeah. I'll enter raffles from people I know. Yeah, yep. I trust. If it's somebody I don't know, Dylan will tell you. He just told you a perfect story about it. Yep. Just pass it on. You know, pass yeah. it. You know. Um, I see them all the time, and some of them are tempting, but because of that experience, if I don't personally really know the person, I won't. I won't do enter the giveaways. I won't enter the raffles. And get to know the person if you really if you're interested in your raffles and stuff. Take some time. You know, research them out. It's yeah. Not you know, you can you can ask around. Them. Yeah. Where do my yeah. And usually like, I mean, I hate to, you know, everybody hates the devil book. All right. But um, there is a good group on there, uh, the FBI group that I'm sure most of you in the community know about, which people are very open about, you know, good and bad reviews on there. So just give it a search. It's worth just searching the person. Um, and like I said, this was somebody I highly respected at the time. I did. This was the last thing I expected from this person at all. And uh, when I approached you know him what? about it, it was he basically a situation. Uh, Some people take that shortcut and say, oh, yeah, problem in my hands. I need to get this to be somebody else's problem. And, yep. you know, you could be a good guy a good person and all. But, you know, when you do that, that's that's who you really are. Yeah. And uh, it happens all the time. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate that because um, and that's why I asked that question. You know, I ask these questions because learning from your mistakes is going to save us a lot of trouble, a lot yep. of trouble, a lot of headaches. Um, don't get excited because you see something cool. That's the probably one of the number one things that happen. Yep. Um, and, and treat everything, treat everything as if, listen, if you get something new, just treat everything as if it has respiratory and mites and the whole nine, you know, yep. and just, just consider it as that's what it has. You know what I mean? Don't go yep. treat it, but just put it out back. If preventative out, measures are key. So if you guys aren't doing preventative treatments, you need to start today or tomorrow or as soon as you can. Preventative measures are key. Yeah, um, have some stuff on hand. Have some, it's, you yep. can pick a little stuff at a time. There's a lot of stuff you can actually buy over the counter. You know, they want yep. to get this and you, you can only buy this, but you can buy the same thing over the counter in your local drugstores in different areas. Yep. Tractor supplies and stuff, you know, um, a little research goes a long way and uh, your animals deserve it. And yep. it, it's exactly. It's it's well worth it. But, you know, that's why I like to ask that question, though, because it's a it's a chance for people to learn from somebody else's mistake. Yeah, and man. The rest of us don't have to worry about that. Real quick, I want to thank everybody who came in. And again, if you haven't, um, I you haven't got a question answered or anything here. Usually when I do kind of interview type videos, I really try to give respect to the person. Not that it's disrespectful for jumping over to the side to read comments or anything, but I really want to pick his brain. I think uh, it's more important than me adding in a bunch of kind of crap. But I have a lot of cool stuff to tell you after this stuff here. So stick around for that. And thank you, everybody, for joining. I do appreciate it. And again, thank you, everybody, to the Super Chats last week. I read your names off already um, because those are the people that are definitely helping out to pay for the 18th giveaway. Now, Dylan, what's your big yeah, dog? What's the, what's the big clutch, the big deal? You're not selling Ooh. because you've been waiting to do this. What is it? 
probably my puzzle stuff. See, I was so, you were gonna say something Burmese wise, and and you know, I hate to stereotype type or, or to place you in that one category, but yeah. Here, so that excites me that you're, so, you you are a Burm guy, but your yep. most exciting thing is this puzzle, and I don't blame you because it would be Burms, but honestly, the girl I really wanted to go this year hasn't been receptive. Uh, what's weird is she's still building, but she's not receptive, and I've never witnessed a single lock. Um, and I don't really leave my berms, you know, maybe overnight, so they could have gotten it in. Uh, but I'm very observant when I have berms paired. I'm in the room every hour, every 20 minutes, you know, checking. Now, are you messing with temps, you know, during night and day? Are you messing with temps? No, with I do not temp cycle at all. Um, and, you know, this is just my experience, but I recommend nobody does that. Do not ever touch your hotspot. I do let my ambient room cool down, uh, you know, through basically through Halloween until about now. I let the ambient, you know, it'll drop right. down to like 75 instead of, you know, 78 to 80. Now, there's um, a really good reason. I don't want to cut you off. But there's a really good reason why you don't like messing with the hotspot. And I would love for you to just share that real quick if you could. Cause yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've known multiple people who've lost animals due to that. Uh, you know, a lot of the old school guys, they'd cool temps quite a bit, especially with berms. They still and, do. They yep. do it no other way. <laughs> yep. Open windows. I mean, we're talking really cooling them down below 70 and stuff. And uh, that's not, it doesn't work. Uh, I mean, it obviously it works, but it's not good for your animals. It causes a lot of respiratory infections. I've seen a lot and had to deal with that myself from trying. And then um, there's it's the human air that goes yep. along. Yeah, exactly. So I don't ever touch hot spots. It's just not the, the animal needs that hot spot. If they're eating, they need to be able to digest at that hot spot. They need that, you know, hot spot. And also, if they want a chance to cool, your ambient cool temp is going to cool down the cool side of the cage. They'll tell you what they want. If they're on the cool side, then you're good. Right. But if they want the warmth, it's there. You're not ever removing yeah. that from them, no, not giving them the option. And that's not knocking people that do the temp changes and all that other stuff. It's just just you're you're opening the door for. Yeah, um, this is what's worked for me. And I know, you know, everyone out there who's watching, I've only had a few successful berm clutches. But like I said in the beginning, I've had a chance to learn from some really great people who have set me up for success, in my opinion, you know, and they're right. successful and they've taught me what they know. And I've also watched what they're doing and I see their success versus the other people doing other stuff that, you know, they, they might be successful, but I don't see the same, the same success, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, no, I, I, so I don't, I don't ever mess with that, but I would be excited about that uh, berm clutch going. Unfortunately, like I said, I just haven't seen any locks. So, you know, no, I'm, I'm definitely going to get a berm for me again. I'm not, I'm not looking to breed this. This is going to be a, uh, a family member. It's not, yeah. Fun just like uh, a lizard that's coming. Um, so it doesn't matter really what it is. You know, what I, mean? yeah. I, I do prefer a female. I know that's hard to get rid of sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Female's fine with me. Uh, I got you, buddy. I got you. Don't I even like worry. Too, but I like big heads. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like big bull heads. Uh, I've been around a lot more berms that have retics. Yeah. Yes, retics come in some amazing colors. And let me tell you, I might get one of those down the road as well. Uh, but yeah, I definitely want one. And no hurry. You know what I mean? Yep no special deals or nothing like that uh, right, whatever, i got you whatever you would give anybody else in the list here is is fine with me i'm not yep. cut corners anywhere but i got um, you we will have one berm clutch still this year uh retained sperm so it's going to be retained sperm from my green double head albino granite to my big head albino girl um i actually need to pull her out at some point uh just to let her get a little exercise before her prelay shed which she should be doing any day now so if you want um you know at some point i can pull her out and let her cruise for a minute but um yeah if i don't let that happen everybody's gonna jump off of here and give me all the thumbs I mean, if you guys want to see anything just let me know I'll, I'll pull it out and we can check it out um my partner's already made aware that you know there might be big snakes out so in case you guys are wondering out there, yes, I'm alone in this room, but my significant other's in that room right behind me watching, making sure if I pull snakes out, always have a backup, never do it by yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so as far, just to finish your question though, sorry, I can rant forever, man. Um, um, the puzzle stuff, I'm really excited about it. I, I see, a, I've seen what Will has done with the puzzle stuff, you know, and a few other local guys. Uh, there's this local guy, John, who's got some crazy puzzle stuff going on. I had the opportunity to pick up a, you know, a fairly large group. Uh, it was about 12 animals. 
of uh you know all puzzle stuff and uh this will be my wow. first year producing them and i'm just super stoked so gotcha. i'll have two chances at hitting spot nose puzzles uh one of those pairings being a yellow belly het puzzle female so i might even be able to hit spot nose yellow belly puzzles and then i have a trio as well of double het hypo puzzles uh, that should be ready either later this year or maybe, you know, beginning of next season. Oh, so you didn't, you didn't invest, you invested. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't invest, that's invested. So that's, uh, that's awesome. That's really awesome. You know, well, you know, uh, I kind of toyed with some other recessive projects and I, I still have, you know, pied stuff and clown stuff and the hypo stuff. And I love, love the hypo stuff. Um, and not that there's anything wrong with clown or pied. I just, I got I got lucky and, you know, a friend offered me basically every single puzzle he had and I couldn't say no. It's something I'd love. And I was like, OK, so not only do I get to work with the recessive that I wanted to that I thought maybe, you know, I couldn't get into. Can you show us one of these uh, puzzles that. Um... Yeah. So they're all hats. All mine. The right. whole group I bought is just hats, but I, I don't mind pulling them out. Pull, pull. Um, these heads up. Maybe if you could pull a male and a female that you're putting together just so we can get an idea. And if you don't know what the puzzle is, it's really easy to check out. You can go see what it kind of does. It, it's pretty wicked. It's yeah. Pretty wicked. And I'm so, really surprised to hear that somebody was willing to sell you their whole set of puzzle stuff. Uh, yeah. I basically, I bought every single one, including a clutch that hadn't even shed. Man, you better not walk down an so. alley behind my shop anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull out the hat puzzle girl, girl first. Um, I'm going to have to take my headphones out so I won't be able to hear you, but it'll be fairly quick because she did already ovulate. And then I'll go ahead and pull some of the other yeah, stuff yeah, out. Please. Yeah, don't stress out. And if she's all good, leave her be. All right, now that he's not listening, everybody, comment down below. What do you want to see next? I want to see them take that big burn mouse, stretch your scales. I don't know about you all. And I do appreciate you all. Trust me. Um, I'm not trying to ignore you. I go back and I read all the comments and next week or next week. So I'm okay. just waiting for this girl's pre-lay shed. Uh, but she has already ovulated. Uh, if you guys, I see, you know, if some familiar names in the comments, um, you guys have probably seen my posts on Instagram about this girl, but I'm super excited. This will be my first <laughs> chance at hitting visuals. Um, and then let me go ahead and set this girl down. Like I said, just make sure he does a video of cutting that clutch. So remind so. me the time he can't hear us. Set her down. You know what? I'll show this male off. I actually have this male listed but i think oh he's in shed no but i think i'm gonna take him off and hold him back still because uh it sucks he's in shed but this is a uh, jigsaw hat uh, puzzle 100 percent hat puzzle jigsaw male and man he looks bright right now but you guys are gonna have to take my word or go check out uh you know some pictures on my instagram of this boy he is so bright for a jigsaw I mean, just there's a whole, it's a whole nother level of uh, brightness going on. And, it, you know, it'll give me a backup mail too. Um, I already have a few, but this will give me uh, just another backup to keep going with, you know. So, like I said, I thought about letting him go because I really want to work on the spot nose puzzle stuff, but I don't know. This dude's kind of cool. Hey, uh, Chris Ryan Dog Reptile said he wants something that's going to bite you. Uh -huh. Okay, hold on. I'll grab the yellow belly hit. <laughs> See how it is, Chris. All right, Chris. Sorry at the end of the bus on that, man. But uh, actually, before I grab that girl, I'm never, uh, never, never know unless he goes back and watches. So I'll show you the sire that I've been <laughs> like, using it's... for the most part this season. Yeah, not gets, face, buddy. He gets bit. Somebody give me a buck. <laughs> okay. That puzzle stuff is nippy. I will say that straight up. And I never thought I would ever in my life say that a ball python is nippy. But... I've heard from everybody that's breeding them that they've all said the same thing. Look at that head stamp. Beautiful spot nose head stamp. He's wanting to curl up and be a jerk right now. But you can really see the wow. head puzzle influence, honestly. I feel like it's very apparent for just a spot nose head. Yeah, all the way down the bottom. Feel... The side. Yeah, it kind of just elongates everything a bit. Um you know, and then overall brightness, which you couldn't really see with the jigsaw. But uh, like I said, take my word or go check us out on Instagram and uh, see that dude because he is bright, awesome. bright, bright. I'll grab yep. that yellow belly head because I know Iron Dog wants to see me get snapped at. Thanks, Chris. He and he's texting me and everything. 
Stop, dude. Grow up. Oh, no, I got you. <laughs> I know I'm a little bit of a turd. <laughs> Yo, Dylan's awesome, man. And you also put him out on Instagram. Dude. He's so down to earth and chill. You all know that already, but if you're new in here and you Oh, and she's deep in blue. You this really is don't like this. He's not gonna tell you something make himself look better or make himself look better. He's gonna tell you, you know, what he really feels. It's not even fair because she's deep in blue. But this girl is normally, I mean, you guys can see that that snake is deep in blue. Listen, every one of your snakes is going to be about this so, time. Uh, in blue at the same time. All my snakes go in blue at about the same time, too. I mean, it's the way. Right. Feed, you know? So this is a smaller girl. Uh, she just started pairing, but I'm hoping she'll go by the end of the year. Like I said, you guys see those blue eyes. So it doesn't want- look as good, but... Just a, a beautiful yellow belly when she's not in shed. Uh, and I really look forward to getting the yellow belly into the puzzle project because I want to work on highway puzzles. And then eventually I want to work on super gravel puzzles. So yeah, that's, a, that's a goal <laughs> yeah, for sure. Super gravel, so that, yeah. yeah yep. No problems, no headaches, no maybes. You know, no yeah, yep. exactly. I mean, and you're talking to super gravel visual puzzle. The minimum thing you'll ever make after that is a gravel pet puzzle. Well, you ain't going to be able to sell it. Who can afford that? Oh, I won't sell it. I won't sell it. <laughs> so I'll grab a – there is some double heads, though. Sorry, I'm way up there. There are yeah. some double heads, though, I'll grab out that I know aren't in shed because I was just working with them that look amazing for just a normal double head. Nice, nice. Everybody, please stay tuned after the interview. I am going to talk about a few channels doing giveaways as well as some doing raffles and stuff. So um, if you're interested in that, I'll hang out. And um, I do appreciate y'all stopping in. Again, these are the kind of videos that I really enjoy um, talking with people. I know that they're probably not the best for my channel all the time because I'm probably not the best interviewer, but I do try. And um, you know, I put some thought into it. And um, if I haven't had you on the channel, I will calm down. There's a lot of people out there that I'd love to pick your brain with some stuff. And um, there's a lot of new people that are getting into it that I'd love to see how you feel and how you're starting out. Something maybe you can reflect on a year because we'll all be hanging out. So soon. before these girls start snapping at me, those are just normal double hats. But the bright, I mean, wait, where hand am I in? Look, Enchi colored. Yeah, right? This girl almost has that like Enchi like color and that high flaming. And this girl's flaming was so crazy. It reminded me of the yellow belly. But there's no way. They're just 100% double hats. Let me see it the head. A visual puzzle to a visual hypo pairing. So. Really excited about these. I mean, they've been slamming food since I got them. They're already pushing, you know, 600 plus grams. So uh, really excited for that. I mean, double hat hy- or, you know, double visual hypo puzzles look amazing. They are amazing and such a good building block. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I'm hoping. I'd love to get my hand on a bunch I've of heads. I've been head. watching a local buddy. He's pairing some blackhead into. Um, kind of forget the exact pairing, but the babies are going to produce triple het. Keep it in your pants, Jerome. Hypo puzzle clowns. Uh, so I'm really trying to uh, hopefully he'll let go of some blackhead triple hets. Yeah, I had to tell Jerome keep it in his pants with the blackhead talk going on. <laughs> I think you're all crazy in here at the blackhead talk. Yeah, I, I do love my blackhead stuff, blackhead. man is really good stuff you know what i slept i slept on that stuff because a few years ago nobody was really giving a crap about the yep. game, being honest and they were all over the place and i could have really gotten involved and i just was like eh this is gonna go better for me <laughs> so any anything else you want me to pull out i can pull out some more stuff if you guys want to see snakes or the monitor or whatever well the, i would love to see the monitor if you don't mind yeah uh, yeah He's a bit of a jerk face, but I'll do my best. You know, <laughs> all are really kind of going to be like that. They're kind of teenagers. If I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll prefix his name's Luda. I'll talk as I'm doing this. Uh, his name's Luda. I took him in a few years ago from a teenage kid who got in over his head and didn't know what he was expecting. And uh, yeah. Hi, bud. Hi. Come here. Hi. Sorry, guys, I'm trying not to get bit in this process. I, I don't mind a, you know, ball python little nip, but I don't want to get bit by him. 
So uh, you said this is Lou. What? Really, bro? Oh. <laughs> he was just drinking water, so he's freaking spitting his juice all over me. Hold on. Oh, he's awesome. Really, buddy? All Don't right. stress him out, D. Chill out, then. I'll grab him out here in just a second. He literally just spit a mouthful of water all over my desk. No, I totally respect that. Don't stress oh. him out. Love that man, boy. We yeah. Look though, God, he's so he's a beautiful dude. Uh, his name's Luda. Like I said, I took him in a few years ago from a teenage kid who got it over his head. Um, he's just my dude. I don't know. He's kind of just a. I guess now, you call him an ambassador him? around here. Does he walk around? Does he does he make messes on your nice carpet? Yep, all the time. So actually, that's a big thing too. That I'm glad you brought that up. Is we actually do trainings with him where we. Uh, we pull them out. I put milk crates. I'll double stack them here and then make a staircase for them. And anytime we feed him, I try to pull him out and I make him run around the room for his food. I think exercise is really important. People hear me stress it about my snakes a lot. Um, I, I guess I just don't share Luda enough publicly, uh, but I do the same thing with him. They're, you know, they're opportunistic feeders and in the wild, they're going to run. They're going to mob for that prey item. So I feel it's important, you know, I, I get up and I run around the room in circles and I make him chase the food. I'll put oh. obstacles in the room to make him go up and over, or, you know, under it. And that way he has to work for that food. Now, does he like to tear up the walls? Uh, in the cage, yeah. No, I don't let him do it outside of the cage, but he's yeah. horrible. I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have some issues, I'm sure. And I'm just trying to safeguard yep. myself. There would be a lot of he's not really got a lot of training he's an adult male himself yeah um, and he's been raised bad but he's been very spoiled too so he has the two-year-old tantrums like i'm sure yep. your guy you know um so there's gonna be some of that curbing but i do so, want to make sure that he spends a lot of time out and about as well um, yeah closure now i'm gonna kind of do an enclosure it's it's going to be deep um much like yours but yep. my, top is actually going to be a two piece. I'm going to kind of make the top to where the top part is pretty much screened. Uh, okay. And yeah. Down, and it can come off, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and mainly that will be so that I can get it out my doors as well as it will have a really nice basking spot to be in. Um, if, if it wanted to, for the natural sun, because, uh, the lizard that I'm getting, um, seems to see things differently in UV light that it does. Okay. Okay inside your regular light so sometimes when you take them outside they freak out for a little bit for you yep. because you don't look the same anymore yeah so i'm hoping that if i have this uh set up like that and it has some natural uv coming in and it sees me in that light as well as the regular fluorescent or leds you know yeah i don't know it might sound like spanish to people but believe it or not that's a thing <laughs> oh for sure yeah i mean uh you know luda also he's very particular he'll come out and i can handle him but pretty much nobody else can really reach in there. Like if I get him out, like I can, you know, the girlfriend can pet him and my buddies can pet him or whatnot, but I'm pretty much the only one who can pick that lizard up. He won't let anybody else pick him up. They become very familiar with you as people. And I think that goes pretty, you know, pretty wide with monitors, not just savannas. Right. You know, I have had a mangrove monitor, um, you know, even our rhino iguana, our rhino iguana is like that. Um, you know, he's getting better with me, but for the most part, that's Amanda's lizard. I can pick him up now, no problem, and it's fine, but he loves Amanda in a wow. different way than me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leon, thank you very much. I gave you a shout out earlier on for your super chat last week as well. Thank you so much, man. I do definitely appreciate it. And everybody also thanks you as well because they know that that money goes right into the giveaway stuff for the live shows. So definitely appreciate it. Um, Heck yeah, and hi to everybody in the comments, by the way. I, I'm seeing your guys' comments roll by and yep. uh, seeing we're, we're a lot of familiar people. Pay a little bit more attention to the comments from here. Uh, I, I'm not going to be able to be on much longer. Um, yeah. But I, I tell you, I've been really anticipating talking with you. I hope you all did enjoy this so far. I'm, I'm going to ask Dylan if you can bring out this, Nick, maybe stretch your skills towards the, you know, as we close out. Um, yeah. I'd love to see it myself. Everybody likes to see big snakes. I want to thank the people that have joined in here. We're not ending just yet, so uh, but I see some people started coming in there. Spartan Reptiles, thank you. I appreciate you. Fully of MA, I see you in there. Uh, LKB, again, thank you. Heather, I see you jump in. Buddy Josh. You, you, you got a buddy Josh in here? We're good. Oh, that yeah, Josh, Spartan yeah. Reptiles, yep. Good dude, man. He's, he's actually like kind of like family of mine. You know what I mean? He's, he's become good people right there. Yeah, he's become somebody that you call up, you know, when you got to talk. So yeah. uh, he's a good dude. 
Um, hey, pardon me for one second. This big pile of spit sitting right next to my hands on the table is bugging me. <laughs> I mean, that's, I did put a link to Joe's channel in there, and I'm going to go ahead and do it again. So please go ahead and check them out. If you haven't there and subscribed, it'll only take a second uh, and do so well worth it again. Um, you can learn a lot from this guy. And again, another example of somebody who has not been doing this for very long, but understands the fact that you're researching the stuff and you can go a real long way in a short amount of time. If you do it. And that's what it touches me about. And again, you all impressed me a lot with your crap too. Don't worry, I'm happy to talk about it. <laughs> my cousin that was Jerry weird. Was In all the years, he has never once spit water on me like that. <laughs> I must have. He was literally like right at the dish over there, so I must have just bugged him. Right here, just talking about other lizard stuff, and it was like, mm. Daryl, you're out of here, man. I appreciate you. Uh, Exquisite exotics, Daryl and Holly, two cool people again. Subscribe to everybody yeah. here. I haven't seen any turds in here yet. <laughs> we're pretty lucky we got a lot of amazing that's people one I'll, I'll have to go check them out if you say they're good people i'll go check them out i haven't heard that name Holly. uh yeah man uh these this is uh i can't call him a mad scientist because he's not really mad but you know their brains work a few levels above <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you appreciate them definitely um for sure now i i do want to know um, oh jeremy wants me to when uh when when big youp's ready i'll I'll pull that out jeremy i'll tell you what, i i just want to let you know again um and then please pull it out um yeah i do appreciate you i think a lot of people in this community appreciate you and um i have a question i'll put you on the spot yeah you're involved with different groups and different people and you've been in different youtube communities like a lot of us all um yep what would you and, and listen nobody's gonna hurt on it but i have a lot of faith in this community as being different than any community i've ever been part of and again i've been doing this for I've been a part of a lot of communities over 20 some years you know what i mean yeah uh, i have to say the community that we're building here with the help of everybody in this chat so i'm not saying i'm building crap i'm not saying he's building crap i'm saying all these people in here heck uh, yeah sharing. takes everybody i've seen more sharing liking of videos than i've ever seen in my since I, i've been doing youtube since 2006 not this channel but i've been doing it that long and uh never seen nothing like it uh it's really appreciated now what would you say in this community? Have you seen a community that kind of acts this way? Like we, it doesn't seem like nobody's at each other's throats. It doesn't seem like if we have issues, we seem to work them out. Have you seen that? No, honestly, I haven't. To be straight up, not personally. You know, the fishing community, a uh, very close knit and cutthroat. Um, you know, maybe the hiking community, I guess, is the only other like at least oh, as far as our local hiking, you know, groups of people. Uh, you know, I'm part of a few local like hikers facebook groups and stuff just because they share some really amazing spots and some really amazing hiking trips and a feeling too it's not like uh i did this and you didn't type of thing yeah it's like hey you got to go check this out here's how to get there here's you know make sure you're prepared bring this this and this don't leave without this and this you know it's it's very helpful and that, i guess really that's the only other community i've seen but even then i've never seen as much togetherness as doing, you know, sticker swaps and this and that, and, you know, helping each other out and coming together for a good cause, you know, um, between myself working in the music industry and having friends who are actually, you know, play and are, you know, in bands in the local music industry, even, you know, that's something, even my buddy Shane, uh, he has his own band and he, you know, he told me, he's like, you know, I wish they did this in our community. I wish the local music scene would, trade stickers and promote each other more than you start know so cut throat start backing each other up save save what you love you know yeah uh, and, and it's awesome and I, and I just wanted to i just wanted to get your take on that i kind of i kind of knew there's really not much you could say other than something like that because it's that weird and so if you're yeah. right now go ahead and share it let people know we don't you know that it, it's really pleases itself i think we've yep. never we've never forced anybody out of our group We've had people go because they realized they just weren't going to work because they just couldn't control themselves and they left them their own because they liked us so much, you know. What yep. I mean? uh, and it's comfortable. So uh, thanks to people like you, Dylan, and all these people in the chat. We have that. Um, I'm not going to waste any more time. People got stuff to do. We need to see a big berm. I'm going to put Yeah, I do. I do want to say one thing real quick. Shameless. And, well, not shameless plug, plug. but. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people, including myself, okay, so I'm not saying I haven't done this talking about US Arc lately, and I'm so glad we're pushing it out there, but I just want to stress a little bit to everybody, there's more you can do than just monetary gain. 
Um, if you could just type a professional, polite email or write a letter or make a phone call or, you know, send in an email, just there's so many ways you can support and help with all this legislation going on without having to financially help. If you can, even better, you know, of course they need our help, but there's also a lot more we can do to help them out uh, than just the money. And I just want to put that out there because all I keep hearing is donate yeah. this, donate that, membership this, and membership it, it that, that, which is great. Related. It can be any kind of fish, pet, any kind of thing. I yeah. mean, we all are in the same boat together. So it doesn't exactly. matter if you're a dog person or a cat person. Um, you should have each other's back. And uh, thank you, Dylan. Is there anything else you'd like to plug to? I mean, you have a wonderful channel and a wonderful Instagram under the same names. Um, well, I mean, if you, if you guys really want to check us out, um, you can either search D's Balls and Exotics, or uh, if you guys would like to check out our website, which will link you to all of our social media, including our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Morph Market. I mean, everything's there. It's super easy, www.thesnakenerd.com. So uh, if you guys want to check it out, feel free. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, like I said, we mainly focus on balls and berms. I do occasionally talk about some other stuff like, you know, uh, the Savannah monitor or my colubrid stuff uh, happening. So I'm actually planning on doing a video on that soon. A lot of people don't know about my colubrid projects, um, but I'll stop no. ranting about that. Let me show you guys. Oh, a big oh, dude, you you can't talk about colubrid projects at the end of the video. And then was like, what? Colubrids? You're doing something with colubrids? You're okay, coming out. So you're coming out again. Save it. You're not allowed yep. to talk. Everybody else, everybody right. in here wants Dylan on now to talk about that. He's not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> you can't come on my show, punk, <laughs> and say some shit like that and then run off. It's not happening. The people deserve better. I'll have you back on another time. Maybe yeah. we'll have a little round table, have a few people in, just sit down, shoot the crap, uh, and uh, pass the bowl to the right. Who knows? Um, yep, yep. But... <laughs> All right, let me pull out this girl for you guys. Awesome. And again, everybody, I do appreciate you coming in here and having a good time. This is definitely a way I like to spend my evening. So I'm going to throw him up on the big screen and let you check him out. Uh, check her out, actually. Sorry, I bugged you, bud. You cool? I'm doing things wrong. Going You guys are going to have to just be patient with me for just a moment. Hi, sweetie. So no matter how well you know your snakes, it's always good, good to go in there and let them know your intentions up front. You see a lot of people that get too comfortable and they feel like they don't have to rub their snake down because they know it so well and that's the time that it comes out and grabs them. And uh, don't worry if you're wondering, he's doing that by himself. His significant other is right on the other side of the door and uh, he starts screaming because he will. She'll come in and um, give that thing a shot of Patron, hopefully, because Patron's a shit. <laughs> no, but I do appreciate y'all. Look at that thing. Wow. I'm going to have a baby from that, so y'all know. Pretty cool, huh? You better get on board now, too, because um, I got one of them. So uh, this is Carmela, my big head albino girl. I don't want to lift her up too high just because she is extremely gravid. Uh, she should be, her pre-lay shed should be any day. She's already uh, missed the blue. So don't mind my mess over there. You know, we got to clean. So yeah, that's Carmela. Dude, awesome. Beautiful awesome. girl. I love that snake. Normal classic Burmese is what made me fall in love with the species. I, I, I just a, I absolutely know. love them. I mean, I've seen that hundreds of them in the Everglades. Uh, I, I never killed them, guys. Back when I was seeing them, they, uh, rescue. They went, Hold on. Yeah, you better get that. <laughs> All right, listen, real quick, everybody. I want you to. Go <laughs> Sorry, Dylan. Uh, Dylan, I'm just going to get lucky there. Uh, I'm going to give these people a rundown real quick. Hissy Fit Reptiles. If you haven't checked him out, go check him out. He has a really cool giveaway going on in his channel right now, and it is a pastel. Super stripe. I uh, know red stripe. Sorry, pastel red stripe vanilla male, and it's pretty bad to the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the chat to his channel, and you should definitely check it out. Not to mention, he's a good guy, and it's not too far away. There you guys go. Oh, I love that Labrador head. Getting a little hissy. Thank you, Dylan. He is beautiful, man. Look at that. So pretty. So calm. 
head on her is amazing. I love it. It's a heavy snake right there, everybody. <laughs> I, I also want you all to go check out Old Troy City Reptiles. He is doing a raffle on his channel for a bamboo clown male. Yeah, bamboo clown male. You want all the details. You want to find out all about that. Go over and check him out on Instagram. I'll put See if I can uh, put you guys so you can really see her. Oh, she's going to get stuck. She's right about 14 foot or so. She looks it. So a decent size for, you know, a berm. Not huge, huge, but she's a good size. There's still more information. Under five, uh, oh, yeah, big hits. She's like, look, I got babies going on. I don't need your crap. Yeah. It's good for her to move around like that, especially at this point. Also, we got Kurtwood over there, Kurtwood75 on Instagram. You're going to want to check him out. I will put a link below. He is also doing a raffle right now for a pretty cool snake. And that is a, where'd we go? Is it old oh, you have clown male. And I think it's just about close to breeder site too. So you don't want to miss out on that. If it was a female, I'd be all over it. You got too many males right now, but there's a link to that as well. So. Go check that out and give them some love for sure. Now, I know Red Bottom Reptiles, she's also got one, and I don't have her link on me right this second, and I'm not exactly sure what snake she has up for raffle, but I see her in a lot of stuff, supporting a lot of people, so I just wanted to let people know about that as well. Dylan, thank you so much, man. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I'm really glad you came on. I know it's a little early for you over there. Yeah, uh, no worries, man. But um, I was really excited all week long about having you on, um, not just for my own selfish reasons, but because I knew it would be a pretty good interview. Um and I appreciate it very much. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people in this community and you've got a lot of respect from everybody and there's a reason why. So hopefully you don't change that. And we do appreciate you. If anybody, no, knows, you guys thanks. seriously for your support and everything and for having me on. Thank you. I appreciate it. Nah, dude. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Um, I do have some more interviews coming up. I try to space them out a little bit so I can have a little bit of fun with you all. Um, I would like to put together a little bit of a round table. I think it's going to have to do something with a more serious subject. So we're going to kind of wait and see how that goes. But I would like to ask you back for that round table in the future, as I believe you would have a lot to um, add to these type of topics. So that yeah, man, let me know and uh, I'll try to make it work. All right. I appreciate that. Also, everybody, uh, I still do have the 3K giveaway going on. And um, I hope you all check that out. I can guarantee you I, I, I have to be fair. Okay, and what I think is fair is that all my longtime subscribers, all of you who are showing up for my lives and my videos, that you should have a little bit more chance than a lot of these people that jumped in to try and win a free snake. So to be fair, I'm going to keep their names in there, even though I kind of don't want to for some of the people that just are in for the free one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the chances of everybody else that is random always in my stuff. I mean, probably about five by five or six. So I can almost guarantee you that somebody that has really been putting time in and watching my channel and supporting me and what we all do um, will win that snake. So I do appreciate it. And I do want to let you all know that. So if you're one of those people that just jumped in to get a snake and you happen to catch this, you might want to go back in some videos because uh, you'll be easy to forget about. You know what I'm saying? Just like I was. <laughs> all right, everybody, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. The location will let you upload the video as always. I love you all. See me. Bye.